Uh, but what I wanted to do tonight is really kind of focus on a couple techniques um, that, that we teach um, that, that I think make your screen game great. And um, there's three things that we're really going to dive very deeply into um, that, that um, I think carry over no matter what types of screens that you run. And I think they're, they're very important um, that, 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 that I just said is very important because um, there, you, we just talked about it, Jackson, you run out of time with screens. And I'm going to talk about that here in just a minute. But the teaching we're also going to talk about tonight applies to reverses. Um, as well as uh, veer spots on zone read for teaching for offensive linemen. So these techniques that, that were, in fact, one of the clips that I'm going to show here in just a little bit is actually us running a reverse uh, three years ago. And it's one of the most unbelievable teaching clips that I have. Um, we, were, uh, we were effective on the, on the rush, but it, we could have done a much better job as an offensive line, as an offensive lineman that was out in space, and it could have turned it into a potential touchdown instead of a, you know, a 15 to a 20 yard gain. There's nothing wrong with 15 to 20 yard gains. I'll take them every day, but I don't want to give up a touchdown. So um, the teaching that we're going to talk about tonight, I think, also applies to a couple, a couple of different things. So. Hey, what are the villains in the screen game in this movie that we're talking about tonight? What are the villains? Number one in the screen game, I think the villain is practice time. Um, you know, we all say or our, our, our own staffs that I've been a part of, uh, we've got to have a screen period. And then, you know, you start off the year and you do that, um, you know, and, but, but hey, it's a five minute period or it's a 10 minute period. And we do it once, you know, once a day. Well, Really, what ends up happening, you work your screens and walkthroughs, um, and then, uh, you know, you'll get a couple of reps uh, during practice time. Uh, you get a couple of reps because, hey, you, by the time you start to get into the meat of the season, well, we can, you know, we really can't uh, put 10 minutes of our practice time and devote it solely to screens. I think those conversations start happening. So, you know, over the years, um, and, and again, I'm 50. I, I wish I would have known this when I was 30 uh, because I thought I could install and implement and run every screen known to man and do a great job of it and only have a five-minute period or a 10-minute period, and boy, was I ever wrong. And what I think we've got to do is we've got to find ways to – make screens as much same as teaching no matter what the screen is as we possibly can. And that's the only way we're going to get and beat these villains that we're going to talk about right now. The second villain, my, my opinion, is the ability to get good quality looks in practice. And especially if you're working against a scout team, um, you know, rush the passer, you know, no, he's not going to react like that. Next thing you know, you're not getting good quality reps and good quality looks uh, in practice. And then, you know, the third villain to me is the amount of live reps that you're going to dedicate to screens. When you script out practice, how many times, how many, how many scripts during a practice schedule am I going to use? Hey, we're working against our defense. So am I going to use any of those good reps versus good people? Am I going to dedicate any of those reps uh, to screens? And for that, for these three things, I kind of, this next statement to me is screens are the special teams of offensive football. Everybody wants to be great at them. And if you want to do screens, it's very important that you are really good at them. But what I've seen is, like special teams, I want you to be really good at it, but you've only got this amount of time to do it. Now go get it done. And that may be five, that may be 10 minutes a week uh, on, on each individual phase of it. You know, maybe punt, you dedicate a little bit more on your punt team time, practice time. But to me, the screen game is kind of the special teams of offensive football. Yeah, let's be great at screens. Yeah, let's be great at screens. Yeah, let's be great at screens. But then uh, maybe the practice time isn't 
uh, given to that to make them great. You're going to give your practice time to the run game. We're going to work the inside zone. That's where our practice time is going to be given in the run game or, you know, different looks on option or, or, or gap scheme that we've got to get ready for that week. In the pass game, it's going to be, you know, you're going to give the reps to protection versus uh, uh, certain pressures, this, that, or the other, or uh, in your passing game, working your concepts. Um, you know, that's where your time is going to be dedicated in practice. Oh, yeah, let's throw a couple screens in practice then it becomes kind of a forgotten thing. So therefore, I think to overcome these villains, um, you know, you got to look at it kind of as special teams. Um, and then my fault, it went fast. I believe that you must have same as carryover. I use that word again, but <clears throat> I've got to be able to go into my guys and say, yes, we do have four screens, but these screens are going to be same as. My release timing may a little be a little bit different, but my blocking assignment and uh, the angles in which we we block, who we block, the angles in which we block them, and then how we block them once we get to them, I think have to be carried over with every screen that you do. So the schematics of it, the protection of it, I think can be a little bit different, but here's who is releasing. Here's how fast they are releasing. Now, everything else stays exactly the same. And what we're going to talk about tonight is we're going to talk about the same as part of screens. Okay. So I think that's how you, uh, you beat the villain. So, hey, the first thing we're going to do, you know, now starring at this movie theater that we're at watching the screen game, um, we're going to talk about screen sets and releases, the fundamental or technique of the sets and the releases, I think are vitally important. And I think uh, there's some carryover there. Um, <clears throat> now the screen, the releases are gonna be different timing based on screen, but I, I think we have a way to teach those so that the guys can remember them. And we have some key code words that when we say, hey, it's that timing, they know. We'll, you'll never hear us say, well, that's a three count or that's a this or that's a that. I think that becomes too much. We got some key buzzwords that our guys hear, and we're going to go through that and the fundamentals. The next thing um, is trapping the chains. We're going to talk about how to teach the O-linemen to release. Um, and I'm going to get ahead of myself a little bit right now, but basically we want to teach them to get into the open field and and create a phone booth block for the offensive line and open field. Because open field blocking is tough for a skilled athlete, very tough for a skilled athlete. And we think our old linemen are skilled athletes, but they are, they are big and, and it's not nearly as easy for them. So we want to try to create a phone booth for them out in open space, if that makes sense. And I think if you do these things um, with the screens, these three things, uh, they carry over to every screen that you're going to run, also carry over to reverses, as well as carrying over uh, like we talked about on veer spots. So, hey, let's dive in. Um, we're going to dive in to the sets and the releases on screens. Um, so for us, OK, and and I stole this straight from Tommy Condell. Um, this is stolen straight. It's the best screen thing that I've ever seen. I'm going to get a sip of water. But Tommy Condell is one of the best coaches um, that that I've had a opportunity and a pleasure to work with. Um, you know, when I spent three years in Hamilton, uh, I was really in a and kind of a think tank of football. And it was unbelievable. Um, you know, just, uh, I'd love to th throw out a little shout out to Orlando Steinhauer and to Jeff Reinbold and to Dennis McPhee, um, you know, and to Corey Grant, those, those five guys, there was some other guys on that staff, but, uh, those five guys doing, uh, did an unbelievable job. And it was, it was a think tank of football learning, um, some of the brightest football minds I've ever been around. Tommy Condell is at the top of that class. And uh, so I give him a little credit, even though it bothers me to do that. 
uh, because his little, you know, his body, he's really short and his head's going to blow up and it really gets really, really disproportional. Um, so if he's out there and he hears that, you know, he'll, he wears his son's, his little son's shirts and pants. So if his head blows up really big, you know, it starts looking like a Macy's Day Parade float or whatever. So uh, I'm going to stop talking about him now. But this picture is from him. I think it is absolutely perfect. You know, hey, timing is everything. And on screens, timing is absolutely everything. That poor penguin picked a really, really bad time for him to dive off into the water. And man, that, 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 that whale right there picked the perfect time to be right there under that, that, that ice, whatever you call that thing right there. I mean, so, hey, that's a perfect picture to me of timing is absolutely everything. So um, here's the three screen release timings that we use. Uh, and, and some technique for our offensive line here at Ohio. Uh, we, we use what we call a slither timing, okay? And a slither time is we are going to set and slither release. Do not get touched, okay? They get a minus if they get touched. So if you get touched, you can go ahead and book it. You're getting a minus on that play. We are slithering through the defensive linemen and or overhang blitzers to get released right now on the screen without getting touched, without getting grabbed, without getting turned, okay? And I have my man Hamburglar right here for a reason, okay? Uh, Braden kind of likes to – he used to go uh, – what is it, Braden? King, is it King, uh, the main the main drag right there through downtown Hamilton? What's the – I can't hear you. Muted. You muted. King Street down there, yeah. Yeah, you know, they had that McDonald's right there. I used to, when we were down at Jarvis, I used to see you sneaking off, and you were you were going rob, rob cheeseburgers from McDonald's off King Street in Hamilton. I think you are the hamburger, okay? But if you're going to go rob something, I tell my guys to be like a bank robber. If you're going to go rob something, you better evaluate everything, and you better have a detailed plan and one of the things, if I'm going to rob the bank, I better have a detailed uh, escape plan. So when we slither release on all of our screen, on all of our time release timings, we have to have a plan. But on a slither release, we've got to have an unbelievable plan. We've got to evaluate the overhang. We've got to evaluate blitzes. We've got to evaluate, hey, is this a possible twist front? Is there, is there things that are going on around me that I need to know? Uh, because I've got to have a perfect uh, escape plan to, to get out and to get into the screen. Then the second one we call is a stab timing, okay? And that timing is we're going to set, stab the defender, and then release. We are going to punch him and release, okay? And then the third timing is a field timing, okay? So we're going to set, we're going to stab, and we are going to keep hands on, and we are going to feel the defensive lineman beat our hip. And once he has beat our hip, then we're going to release out in the screen. So every screen that we do either fits in the, every release that we do for every screen that we do, their release fits into one of those three timings. It's a slither timing, it's a stab timing, or it's a fill timing. And those are very descriptive terms to me, and that's why we use them. When I say, hey, guys, we're slither timing, okay, the, the hamburger's coming out. I know that I better – I'm getting out right now, and I better evaluate my escape plan. Um, it's stab timing. I'm going to set, and I'm going to set for success, and we'll talk about that here in just a minute. Um, but I am going to punch the defender, and my timing is to release. And then we have a field timing. Uh, where, hey, I'm going to set, I'm going to punch the defender, I'm going hands-on, and I want that defender to begin to beat my hip before I release. And we're going we're gonna to look at some film here, and, and I'll kind of talk about, and it, it's going to take my, uh, my external hard drive takes just a second uh, to catch up. So just looking at a couple of different release timings, this is against us against Central Michigan last year. Okay, and you can see our left tackle here, 
That is a slither release timing. Now, he must evaluate, does he think it's corner pressure? Because he needs to know that because if that defensive end is a, a B gap or an A gap defender and now he jabs inside, he's going to get himself jammed up. So he's got to be constantly evaluating the overhang area. Does he feel like this is will pressure coming off the edge right here where that's going inside? He must evaluate all of that all the time. So this is a slither release. You're going to see a stab release by our right guard here. And then on this screen that we're running, our left guard and center are using fill timing um, for, for their releases. And we'll talk about set mechanics here in just a minute, but I just want to go through and I want everybody to kind of see the timing that we're talking about. So right here, we're talking about slither. Right here, we're talking about stab. And then us two, we're talking about fill timing um, so that you can kind of see. I felt right here, our hands on. Now I feel the defensive lineman making a pass rush move. So now I can get out in the screen. You can see the right guard here. He is in no way trying to feel what that knows. He is setting punching, and now he is out to go in the screen. And this tackle here, it is a slither release. And you, I'll show you a couple of different slither releases that we do. But, uh, uh, by the way, just a little props right there. That dude's from uh, right up the road from you guys. He's going to be an unbelievable football player um, for us. We had Nathan Rourke, who is with the BC Lions, um, this, this is his, uh, his younger brother, Curtis and Curtis, I mean, is going to be, we really think he's going to be a fantastic player. Um, you know, he, he, he throws the ball well, he can run well, but the biggest thing he thinks, I, I think he is a, a very intelligent young man, but the biggest thing, both of those Rourke young men are just exceptional, uh, people, um, and, and a guy that you can count on every day. So, um, just a little pump to Curtis, but a fun, fun fact about him, coach. I actually coached against him. I believe he was in grade nine uh, playing for the Burlington Stampeders, which anyone here in Ontario knows a really, really good uh, summer league program. And I got uh, our head coach could not be at the game because he was with football Canada for that week. That was my first career game as a head coach. And oh, I think wow. it was like 50 something, 40 something. And uh, we pulled it out, but I mean, I, he, he played a great game and, uh, you know, that, that team, those two teams were both, you know, two really, really good teams. But my first game as a head coach ever was actually against uh, Curtis Rourke. And I remember wow. thinking, I'm not sure if we're going to stop him once. Um, but we, we managed to get, I think, just enough. Um, we hit some CFL guys on our side, too, so it helped out. But, um, you know, great you know, fun fact. He And his older brother, actually, I don't think would remember this, but they, uh, in a game a few years before, when I was coaching in Guelph, I was still in university at the time, like, like still playing. They hung 80 on us in my first ever game as a coach. So the Roark brothers have two fun pieces of trivia and I think a one in one career against the Roark family, which is probably about as good as anybody. That, hey, they're, they're, they're great people and, and really good football players here. Just a, just seeing. So left tackle, we're just, I'm showing you a slither release here by the left tackle. Hey, we cannot get touched. Um, they can touch and we'll talk, we'll, we're going to get deep into the technique, but that, it, that is slither timing as, as we talk about it. You kind of saw all of them in the clip that we had, um, that was slither timing there. Now, the, Hey, I'm showing you a different screen. So you saw the read screen, then you saw a, uh, a, a quick screen to receiver. Now, now you're going to see kind of a counter throwback screen but still those same timings fit in all of those screens and, and, and in how we teach them. So if you'll look at the center who's releasing here, this would be a fill timing for us uh, as we teach it. So if we're running any kind of play action throwback screen, he's now, hey, we're going we're gonna to block the technique that we have until I feel that guy trying to beat my hip to the quarterback then that's going to initiate our release on the screen. So should be able to get an idea of all three of those timings, um, you know, and, and I tried to show them uh, on three different screens so you could see um, how, they, how they carry over. So when I'm teaching that, um, I'm teaching the same thing. So let's dive into a little bit um, 
of stream terms and timing terms that we use, okay? And I wanna talk, here's where we're gonna try to talk fundamentally about the pass set. Um, if guys, if, if, if you get one thing tonight and you're not already doing this, when your offensive lineman set on screen, set tight to the line of scrimmage, do not set soft. You're gonna see film of us setting soft. Um, but I coach it like crazy to set very tight to the line of scrimmage um, for a couple of different reasons. But but one, it, 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 it allows you to get out. The softer you set, the more you get hung and don't get out on screens. Plus, I think it allows you, and we're not going to talk about these tonight, but it allows you to feel pick, uh, pickpocketers. Um, you know, I'm walking down, I'm walking down uh, what's a famous street, Braden, um, in, in Toronto. Give me a famous street in Toronto. Let's go down, uh, let's go down Jarvis. We're going down Jarvis in Toronto. And uh, I'm walking down the street and I got a thousand dollars in my wallet in my back pocket. And I don't know why, why I would have that because I don't have that much money, but I do right now. Um, and as a screen releaser, if I feel somebody, I'm going to be very, if I had a thousand dollars in my wallet, I would be very conscious of my surroundings. And I would almost feel like I had eyes in the back of my head and I am feeling for pickpocketers. I am feeling for guys trying to rip the wallet out of my back pocket. Um, much more conscious of that it, 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 than if I had $20 in my back pocket. Uh, or, or if I had a, a loony or a toonie in my back pocket, you know, if they get it, they get it. If I catch them, I catch them. But if, if they get a thousand, that's going to hurt me. So the tighter I set to the line of scrimmage, the more, the, the more advantageous it, 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 advantageous it is for me to release, but also I will fill the pickpocketers as well. The defensive lineman is going to get, get into their rush quicker. They're going to get by my hip quicker. They're going to get to the quarterback quicker. Uh, so I want to initiate that process as quickly and as tight to the line of scrimmage as I possibly can. And then when I said we always taught, we want to set to the screen's advantage. And now what screen we're running, that, that determines the screen's advantage. That's just like just a minute ago when we threw the counter throwback screen against Buffalo. I want my center to try to work back where that defensive lineman works over the top of him to get to the quarterback. Now, there are times we can't, we can't get to the screen's advantage, but in our mind and our set thought process, we want to set to the screen's advantage. If we're running a chip screen, which we'll see a couple of chip screens here in just a little bit. If we're running a chip screen, and it's going to be really tight off of the hip uh, uh, of our tackle. Then I want to slightly overset if I'm that guard and try to set advantageously to the screen, if that makes sense. And I, I'm going to have to I'm going to have to roll a little bit, uh, Jackson, because we we got some ground to cover and. Uh, You've you've put me on a time limit, so hey, I got to. No worries, Coach. We'll, we'll get. I know. Through we get through. I know. Hey, stab. We want to protect our chest and keep our elbows bent when we stab. So when we talk about stab release, we want to protect our chest with our hands on all of our sets. We want to protect our chest with our hands, and we do not want to be pressed back into the backfield. That's going to keep me from releasing. And now, when I do release. That guy's going to feel me release. I want him thinking he is beating my hip and not feeling, uh, not feeling me release, okay? Then a feel, the ability to be hand sensitive. We are reading with our hands, okay, whether the D lineman is rushing or not, and we read when he is past my hip, okay? Uh, the body will be turned. That's kind of how I teach him on the feel timing is – Hey, I'm working, I'm working, I'm working. My body starts to turn as he is beating me by my hip, which now tells me uh, to go ahead and get out and release, okay? Um, then when we talk about release, I think this is very important. We want to release violently with your hands, but do not throw the D-lineman, 
okay? We want to release violently with our hands, but we don't want to throw them. I think they feel that. A D-lineman can feel uh, when you're throwing with your hands and he will redirect uh, or you will turn your shoulders and slow your timing. So if I'm trying to throw a guy, I'm actually going to, one, give him the ability to fill it, but also, two, I'm going to uh, possibly slow my timing down or my ability to get out. Do not get grabbed and explode. Very key word right there. And I'm going to show you that here in just a minute on video. Explode to the down marker. And we're going to talk about the down marker and the importance of that teaching here in just a minute. But exploding when I release, I think that is vitally important to hammer guys. Um, and it's almost like when I'm, when I'm releasing a guy, it's almost like I'm shucking a twist, but we don't want the back foot of the ground to come out of the ground. Okay. And you see my man with the down marker right there. There's a joke. Um, there's a joke behind that. That is actually the right guard that we saw just a minute ago on film when he was like in eighth or ninth grade. So my guys always get a kick out of that when, when I show it in my meetings. Um, but then the, so then slither, we want to set the protection and avoid any contact and release violently again, exploding, releasing violently, give your guys those key terms for them to think about by getting skinny. We want to slither through a closing elevator door. Do not get touched. That elevator door is closing and I want to slither through that. Okay. Um, or it's a minus and explode to the down marker. I may have to, okay, if I'm slither releasing and, and we're talking we're talking uh, three down football where, where the defensive lineman is actually a yard off the ball, okay, that changes things versus, uh, versus four down football where there's no neutral zone, okay? I may actually have to get up the field a little bit and then work back negative to get to the down marker if I'm slither releasing uh, with a, with, so there's a little bit, you gotta, you gotta, you know, because of the rule differences, there's a couple things that you gotta work through. Okay. But, you know, big to me. Okay. And you can see this is, this is slither. Okay. And Braden's gonna, Braden's gonna love this, but it, whether my first step, okay, I want to keep my toe there, but I want to start turning the toe, and it's almost like we're running a speed cut out route. I want to go ahead and get that toe turned so that I can roll over with my third. If I don't jab inside, and now very important that I don't fault step here. A lot of guys, because if we're slither time and your butt needs to get out in a hurry, so I want to get all of my weight on my first step so that I don't fall step. And now I am turning the toe on the second. If that toe is up the field, now I'm going to round that on the third and I'm going to gain too much ground up the field. So teaching their feet on the releases is, is vitally important. And I think even more so when you're talking about three down football versus four down football. I teach that here, but honestly, we can get away with sometimes not being as efficient with our, our footwork on a, on a slither release. I think uh, if you're slither releasing and you're talking three down football uh, where, there's a, where there's a yard neutral zone, you, you don't have that ability to be inefficient. You've got to be efficient with your footwork. Um, so, um, and hey, we're going to release flat and trap the chains. We're going to talk very much into that. But you can see my man right here. Um, and he, he is going through the elevator door. He doesn't have to get, get turned, Braden. He's a, he's a bad man coming through the elevator door right there. He doesn't, we must get turned. So we, that's just a little thing right there. All right. Now, a couple of, couple of things here. First off, really, really love, watch how tight the set is. We're setting the line of scrimmage. We talked about a minute ago on our set. We want to set tight to the line of scrimmage. Okay. Really nice job setting tight to the line of scrimmage, doing a great job. And we're going to talk about, we're going to dive into trapping the chains here in just a minute. But just want to kind of show you some pictures of uh, setting, trapping the chains. The other thing I want to show you, I think we are setting to the screen's advantage right here by the left guard. 
he knows that this is a chip screen and it's going to be really tight. So we are trying to force this guy back across our face. So that to me, a couple different things, setting very tight to the line of scrimmage, as well as setting to the screen's advantage. Just try to give you a picture of, of what that looked like. Here's how not to do it. Okay. Watch our, watch our left guard. I think, uh, excuse me, watch our right guard. We are setting with way too much depth right here. So now we're going to see how he starts to get hung as we start to release. There's way too much depth right here. Plus he doesn't have a defender in his slide side. So he can go ahead and set himself a lot cleaner. Okay. Not a bad job by the left guard right here uh, of setting pretty tight. That's the most depth we would absolutely want to get on a guy uh, before release. Here's a slither timing uh, with the left tackle, and you can see actually jabs out to create some room away from that, the, the width of that three technique right there, okay? But very key, and we're fixing to talk about it here in just a minute, that release. So just different releases. Hey, we're doing a, he does a good job of being flat, but we're late. And the reason I showed this clip, this should be a big play right here, but our guards a hair late and it's because of him and because of that set. So tried to show you a good clip of, hey, setting firm and, and why that's important. And then a poor clip of setting soft. Hopefully the poor clips that I'm showing you is of us doing it, okay? Now, the right tackle, slither timing. Hey, I'm the Hamburglar, Braden. I better be evaluating that contour rotation right there and understanding that now when I slither time, if I post inside right here, okay, or if I do post because I'm not sure, I better stay flat to the line of scrimmage. I do not want to get up in B gap right there because I will not be able to get outside. But a great job of slithering. In my opinion, this guard's doing a great job. He's got to be very careful. He slither timing as well, and he does a great job of not getting touched. So understanding, hey, we've got to have an escape plan on all of our releases, just like we're robbing a bank. Not now, but right now. No, I love it. Hey, and we're calling it slither because I don't care how you get through. You can reduce your hips. You can, hey, if you can run through it square shoulder, run through it square shoulder. The thing you know is, hey, when, when, you, when you have a slither release, now we're going to talk about this here in just a minute, but that's not the point of this clip. Um, when you have a slither release, your butt better get out however you need to get out. And evaluating things and the defense is vitally important. Now, the last thing I'm going to show you a clip of right here and then move on to the next thing is exploding. So we're the slither releasing here, but I want you to watch this tackle and I'll show it to you from the backside. Um, I want you to watch him explode violently on the release, flat down the line of scrimmage. And I mean, he is running, he is exploding. He's not feeling his way around, okay? So just those couple things on releases that I think are, are, are super important. Okay, now let's get into trapping the chains. Okay, and um, let me get let me get myself paused right here. But hey, the first thing I want you to see, we're drag racing right here, and and this car stays straight. Okay, and this car starts to turn. Well, that car is going to hit the hit the wall. Okay, this car is going to stay straight, and he is going to get to the defender or have a chance to get to a defender. Watch my arrows here going straight down the line. I, I apologize. My timing on my uh, – they, they got a little bit fast on me, okay? But I am going straight down the line, potentially even slightly negative if I need to. This is one of the most important fundamentals in teaching screen that you can ever teach, okay? Far too many times I see linemen work on this type of an angle – and then if they ever have to make that turn to make the block, they will never make it. We want to stay flat. Okay, excuse my drawing right there. 
We want to stay flat and we say trap the chains. I am running right at the down marker because that is always at the ball. I don't tell them run flat down the line of scrimmage. We term it trap the chains. They are trapping the down marker. I've heard people say marry the hips to the line of scrimmage, this, that, and the other. This has been the best for my guys. And I think as you watch our clips, you'll see our guys really going flat and not climbing up the field on angles and then all of a sudden having to redirect and they'll never make that block. Okay. That's, that's a critical point. I know when we've run particularly, you know, it, it comes to mind for me in the, in the wide receiver screens, like that was something Braden, we, we, you know, we lived in it, Laurier getting the ball in the perimeter, you know, the old Texans Henry stuff to, to get Curly the ball or some other guys the ball out in space. And, you know, especially in the Canadian field, even if it's in the boundary, like the numbers are so far away, you know, for that tackle to get out and, and pick up the halfback or the corner or, whoever they're, you're, they're responsible for in the scheme, you know, if you get one, you know, one, one or two steps of that fishtail, like you talked about, you know, that's, that's the difference between, you know, it, it hitting in the crease you want and, and the receiver having to make, you know, make a guy miss that he probably shouldn't have to make. So that's, that's a great point that I don't think it's talked about enough. And, and these are things, Jackson, that I carry over to all screens. I don't care whether you're doing a fast wide receiver screen, you're running a, slow landmark screen for a running back or, or even the counter screen that you saw us run, counter throwback screen that you saw us run. It's a fundamental that carries over to all screens. And this in my mind has been the, when I say, when I walk in and tell my guys trap the chains, they know exactly what they're talking about. No matter how, because you get contorted at times in the release but their eyes immediately pick up and find that down marker on the sideline and run right at that down marker. And it, and it kind of self-corrects itself. Um, and it, I'm going to explain a little bit more why it's, why it's vitally important here in just a minute. But I want you to hey, you must stay flat. We must stay flat. I don't care how you get released out of there. You got to find a way to get back at the chains, get back at running right at the down marker. Okay. And then you can see our rules, same as on all of our screens, we are going to trap the first overhang defender. Okay. If I'm, if I'm the first guy out, second guy out, we're going to log the first, uh, the front side backer. And if we get a third guy out, he's working a high safety. That's their rules then we tell them if we're changing the rules by play call. So every screen we do, first guy out, you're trapping the overhang defender. Who is that? Well, what if we're running a screen to a three, a, 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 a three by one down here or, or a quads formation up there, a four by one in, in three down football where, hey, you have a guy uh, to block the Sam in the field half without having to use your offensive lineman. But if you're in a three by two up there or a two by two down here, now, now you don't have, so your lineman's got to get out to the Sam because your number three has got to block the field half up there. Okay. We don't tell our guys. They are releasing to go block the overhang. Then if that overhang defender is being blocked, they're going to adjust up to the high safety. So their rules are the same. Their releases are the same, no matter what, what screens we're running. And I think that's vitally, vitally important. So just a, just a couple pictures here. Um, looking at our left guard here, okay, he is releasing flat. He will have a chance to make this block. And he does. He is running at the down mark. If he does not run at the down marker, if he if he works up the field on an angle to where that defender is at all, he will never be able to make that block. That guy's going to make the play for a negative football play. Or, you know, now the screen wasn't great, but just looking at that one guy. Now, right here, okay, watch our right guard here. Same, really same type screen. 
But here's, here's what I'm coaching us not to do. My defender is high, okay? No, you still run right at the down marker. And we're going to talk about what do I do once I get there if the defender is not there. But you never go on that angle to that defender right there because you won't be able to make that block once he starts coming down the hill, okay? And we're going to say it here in just a minute. But, again, I'm trying to put these guys in a phone booth in how we teach uh, screens and, and, and getting downfield uh, on our releases by trapping the chains. So just a couple of examples there. Here's why to trap the chains. Number one, I think it gives your O-line a chance in space, okay? So when we sell them on this, I tell them, hey, this is what's going to give you a chance in space. I love you, but those guys are really good athletes. It gives the ball carrier a chance to set up the block by the offensive lineman or the tight end or whoever's making that block in space. But if, if, if we're not working fundamentally properly, then now the ball carrier, whether that's a receiver, whether that's a tight end, whether that's a running back, he does not have a chance to set up the block because he doesn't know the angles that, that he's dealing with. Okay. Um, the block is impossible with a poor angle, not often made, versus a better athlete with space. You know, we're, and I've said it several times, we're trying to create a phone booth in space for the O-lineman. So in our teaching, we're trying to create a phone booth in space for the O-lineman. I think that's a very important part. And it allows releasers to see the defense the same, which allows for exchange of assignments. And you can see asses. And I don't know if I can say that live, but we're talking about donkeys, asses. But when we teach screens, okay, I'm the first guy out, I'm the second guy out, I'm the third guy out. And I'm not going to go very deep into that, but, and I'm going to draw it right here. If I'm the first guy out and I'm releasing and I'm on this angle, and I'm the second guy out and I'm releasing and I'm on this angle, and I'm the third guy out, and I'm releasing, and I'm on this angle, okay, I, as I look and as I perceive things, I really don't know who's first, who's second, and who's third, okay? So just because I'm a left guard and I think I'm the first guy out, well, what happens if I got hung up in a twist right here, and now the center actually became the first out? But if I go on this angle right here, I don't see an ass in front of me. So therefore, I still think I'm the first guy out. So we want to release on the same angle so that if we get caught up, hung, we exchange assignments on the run. So as I release and I'm looking and there's no ass in front of me, that's why I have ass capitalized. If there is no ass in front of me, then I am the first guy out and I have first guy out rules, which is to, which is to trap or uh, log the overhang defender. If I have one butt in front of me, then I am the second guy out. I know that. And then if I have two butts in front of me, I'm the third guy out. And that allows us to exchange those assignments as things move and change within the screen, which I think is, is, is vitally important, but we all have to be leaving on that same angle to be able to process that visually with our eyes. And then, hey, we all know what the phone booth makes. Superman gets in there and changes in that phone booth. So we're trying to create a, uh, we're trying to create a phone booth so we can go be Superman downfield. And I, I think that that's one of the things, you know, that as a as a high school offensive lineman, you know, can, if for any athletes that are watching this, like understanding how critical, no matter which guy you are in that in that situation, getting out flat is ultimately the key to giving yourself a chance as, as you actually work down the field. Hey, this is this spring, and our defense did an unbelievable job stopping this screen right here. It's not a successful screen. But it, it, it's to the point of we've got first guy out, second guy out, third guy out. Well, in the playbook, it says that guy's the first guy out, that guy's the second guy out, that guy's the third guy out. But 
look at look at how it all works out. Now, this guard is way too quick on his release, and that's why it works out that way. But I know I'm first out because there's no butt in front of me. He became the second guy out because I have a butt in front of me, and now my center is flat. We're all three flat right there. So now they know, and you've always heard the term Huey, Dewey, and Louie, they know who is Huey, they know who is Dewey, and they know who is Louie. And there is no there is no confusion or question about that. So just just kind of a, a mental picture uh, of that. You know, Braden, you see him, huh? What what we got right there, Braden? We got elephants on parade, brother. I love it, coach. We got elephants on parade. And remember, we're trying to create that phone booth, but that elephant. He isn't going to be as quick and be able to, you know, he he's going to have trouble catching that lion or that cheetah, right? You know what I'm saying? And blocking that lion or that cheetah, okay? And, hey, my elephants are great athletes. They're they're unbelievable uh, football players, and but we've got to help them. And one of the biggest way of helping elephants on parade is putting parameters around what they're doing, but also teaching that guy. And we're not going to dive into teaching him, but if I don't teach the old lineman right, we can't teach this guy right either. So when we're elephants on parade, uh, we have we have three things when we're releasing, when we're in the open field, that we need to evaluate. Number one is the defender soft and off. Okay, if the defender is soft and off, we want to landmark the far, uh, the far number. And we are going to turn up when we leverage the defender. Okay. So just some hard rules for them to work off of. The second thing we're going to evaluate is, is the defender sitting, not sinking. Okay. Or is he attacking downhill? And you'll see me reference it. And I'm going to, again, credit Tommy Condell because when we worked together back in 2003 at Louisiana Monroe, he was then talking about safeties being hood ornaments. And that sucker is sitting, looking, and his body posture is forward. Well, the minute he sees the ball thrown, he is fixing to drive the football. So you may not perceive him to be attacking downhill, but he is fixing to be attacking downhill. So if he is sitting, not sinking, he's a hood ornament on a car. He is, going, he is about to go downhill. So we treat the sitting, not sinking, and a, and a defender that is attacking downhill the same way. We want to kick that defender out. We want to go ear hole to far tip, and we want upfield hand to go to the hip. Very, very important fundamental. We want our ear to go across the bow of the defender and get all the way to the far number. And then we want the upfield hand to go to the hip of the defender. The reason I say hip we want, number one, always want to attack joints, but number two, that will keep us from potentially getting a holding call. If I go high with that back hand, an official will see that go over the top and now possibly call a holding call. We want to landmark the, the hip with that hand. And then the third thing, and I didn't put it in a number, but hey, we never pass up color. If there is unblocked color, now I am not, I am trapping the chains. I am not looking for color. We are exploding to those chains. But if there's a defender that gets in between me and the overhang guy that I'm supposed to block, I'll never pass up color to get to, to, uh, to another guy. So that's our rules. Now, hey, if the defender is soft and off, okay, so – I'm pulling right here. He's doing a great job of what, Braden? Trapping the chains. He is running right down the line of scrimmage, right at the down marker, okay? Here's the defender that he is blocking, okay? That defender is soft and off, all right? Once we get that defender leveraged, when? When we get him leveraged, not before we get him leveraged. Don't start going in on, on an angle here. Get him leveraged, get even with him, then I will begin my turn. Okay. And very, very imperative that once we start our turn, because we've got him leveraged, that we get our shoulders square to the goal line. We're going to actually watch this clip right here in just a minute. 
okay? And you're going to actually see that our old lineman kind of, he, he, he started turning at the right time, but then he kept drifting, and now the back never could, or the receiver, because we're running reverse here, the receiver never could set that block on the offensive lineman. We Once we start turning up, we want to keep our shoulders, get our shoulders to the goal line, so then the back will be able to allow, uh, will be able to set the block on, uh, on us. Okay, and then we want to, we want to landmark the outside number. Now I have this in here for a very specific reason. Okay, that is number fifty-one for the Hamilton Tiger Cats, Mike Filer. I want to give a shout out to Mike Filer, one of the one of the most awesome dudes I, I, I had an opportunity to coach in my lifetime. Um, and am very proud of him. He is actually he is actually coaching right now um, at Mount Allison, uh, back where he played. And um, I hope he's listening tonight. If he's not, I'm gonna kick him in the in the head. But uh, coached some unbelievable guys while I was there. You know, a couple like Peter Dawkowski, Ryan Bombin, Tim O'Neill, some Canadian guys that I coached that were unbelievable players, but just unbelievable dudes as well. Uh, but, you know, want to give a shout out to those guys. But I threw Mike Fowler on there for a reason. Um, you know, he, he way out kicked his coverage with, with uh, you know, with his beautiful soon-to-be bride. And they've got an awesome, uh, awesome son. Um, so he has done something good in his life. A fantastic room. Huh? Oh, yes. All right. So, hey. Now let's talk individually. The defender is sitting, not sinking or attacking. We want to trap that down defender. You can see he's downhill. I say hood ornament, but we're thinking trap that defender. Okay. I don't know why. No, no. It's going crazy on me. Brayden, I don't know what just happened, brother. Kick you out of your. We're uh, we're we're good, coach. If your film takes a sec, there we're fine. Okay. I got. Uh, let's see. Oh, I I didn't get to this clip for that that I got a I got to head to the next. So, um, here's just working. I think I think a great picture of hey that guy is soft and off. That guy's soft and off right there, okay? But we are running right at the down markers until we get leverage the guy. We may have turned up just a hair early here, but I think it's very important that we are running right at the down marker. And now, once we get leverage, we start turning up. Guys, This I hate to tell you, but this young man right here is about 375 pounds. But what I think we did, and he is an exceptional athlete. He is moving that way at 375 pounds. But what I think we did is we created a phone booth for him in space, if that makes sense, based on how we teach it, where if he would have just started going at the guy right here, that guy would have triggered and out-athleted him to the ball right there. Love seeing – Big men downfield knocking little guys down. I, I, you know, uh, it does me good. It does me good to see this. Now we are slither releasing here, okay? And he he felt like because this was a this was a blitz look that this would be widening, so he got really wide. Sometimes we jab that inside. Again, hey, we're the Hamburglar. We're got to understand our route to get out. Now, here's that look we were just talking about a minute ago on the reverse and I want you to watch it's going to end up being our center here that that is the guy. He does a fantastic job. Hey, we are flat down the line of scrimmage. He is trapped in the chains. Here is here is it working uh in a different scheme that we do. He has leveraged the defender that we are responsible for. But he continues to drift wide. We never get our shoulders turned to the goal line and square. Now, we end up gaining 17 or 18 yards right here, but if he would have allowed this receiver to run right up 
his backside and now put that block on him. We did not create a phone booth because of our technique right here, if that makes sense. And I've got to do a better job coaching and he's got to do a better job of understanding. But when we turn up, those shoulders must go square to the goal line. And now it is this guy's job to put that block on me. I do not want to keep drifting. If I keep drifting, I will never be able to make that block. There's too much space. That guy can undercut me right there um, and, and affect the play. All right, so that's I got to – so, hey, if we're trapping a guy, now you can see we're not ear hole to far tit. This helmet and this circle is where I want our hat to go. I want our hat to go across the bow to the far tip. So this would be, we're running screen right. I want our upfield hand, or if it's screen right, our left hand, so the hand he's got up high on the shoulder here, we can get a holding call right there. I want to get that hand down on a joint, down on the hip right there, okay? And never take the cheese, Braden. At times, we're going to want to take the cheese. We're going to want to go to that defender where he is. No, stay flat. That's why there's a flat tire under that. Stay flat. Don't take the cheese. You stay flat until you get leveraged. Okay? Very, very important. And then, hey, I just really just reiterated what we had said earlier. Here's a couple looks of All right, so, hey, we're thinking right here, we're thinking we got to be flat to that corner because that's our, that's our overhang defender. Our, our, our receiver is going to crack the wheel, but that guy, that guy got across his face. Hey, you own it. You take it. I wish he would have stuck with it and not tried to adjust to the wheel right there because now once we get it leveraged, we're going to start – we need to start turning up right here and getting our shoulders square to the goal line. I think very important. If we would have stayed on an angle right here, that guy would have been able to undercut me and make the play on the, um, on the, on the running back right there, if that makes sense. So just, a, just an example of us doing it right here. So that's kind of it. I kind of, I,